Hi, welcome to Juice Bar. Today we're gonna mix a trifle tini. So the trifle tini is a cocktail created by Jan Baldwin in 2000, a G club in London, and it's gonna be a fun cocktail. It's gonna be built like a trifle, which is a sweet of British origins. We don't have anything really quite like the trifle in Italy. We have other layer desserts, most famously the tiramisu, but not with such a combination of flavor. So today let's get down to mixing this super sweet and heavy cocktail. So let's start with the fruits. 10 raspberries. 10 raspberries, 2 strawberries, which they cost as much as gold right now. In a couple of weeks, they're gonna be slightly cheaper in Japan because I think they schedule the maturing of the fruits in greenhouses just right for the end of the year, one of the major holidays here in Japan. So let's get two of these extremely precious and expensive strawberries. Let's clean them. And then the instruction says to muddle these ingredients. So let's muddle these beautiful fruits. I really hope this cocktail is worth it. I have my dubs, but I've been wrong many times. So all the insane elevated sugar content of this cocktail, maybe it's gonna be justified. Who knows? Okay, now for the alcoholic ingredients. Let's start with the Leger Frise, Crème de Fraise, Strawberries Liqueur. This uh, comes at 15% ABV. And we're gonna need 15 milliliters of this. Okay. Doubling down on strawberries. And then we're gonna need probably the most interesting ingredient of this bunch, which is Pedro Jimenez sherry. And I'm opening it right now. And let's see how it tastes like. One thing I found out about the Pedro Jimenez sherry is that it's about a third of the content of one bottle is sugar. More than 200 grams of sugar per bottle. Let me first try it like that. I'm just curious. I got this El Candado. I don't know where I got it. Did you get it on sale? It smells deeply of raisins so raisins smells nice and wood yeah it's really sweet really syrupy yeah almost like a sweet syrup yeah and we're gonna need 30 milliliters of this pedro jimenez sherry Then 22.5 milliliters of Amaretto, the almond flavored liqueur from Italy. Everything is really sugary, except for the cognac. We are gonna need 60 milliliters of cognac. And cognac is not itself sweet but it's not like one of those bitter things anyway 60 milliliters of remy martin ah it's not remy martin it's hennessy yeah i didn't buy remy martin for a long time because it's insanely expensive while hennessy i still found it at a more reasonable price let me just give this a slight taste to see what we are doing here. Mm. 
I don't know, I don't know. Next we are gonna need to shake this bad boy up with some ice. A strong shake trying to smash up a bit more of those berries. Let's find strain in a shield coop. I must say the color is beautiful. This mix of brown, gold and red. Really festive. Are we even gonna fit in here? Do I need to change glass? Okay, now I hope we have enough space to top it off with some whipped cream. The recipe said 45 milliliter of cream. I'm just gonna whip this much, which is probably like about 100, and then I'm gonna use what I can. Light whip, we shouldn't over whip, of course. We don't want it hard, we want it to flow nicely on top. Let's see if I can do it. Last time I did something like this, I, I missed it. I over whipped. This is gonna be fine. This is still too liquid. I decided it's fine. Let's just put it here on top. A bit more, let's go to the edge, to the limit. And finally, we top off with some crunch cereal bar. I'm using a Japanese dark chocolate nut bar, which I actually quite enjoy. It's uh, rich in proteins. Let's see. I'm not the best at decorating. I think we are gonna make it fine. Okay, I guess that's it. And there you go, a trifle teeny. Cheers. Mm. One more sip. Oh. Way better than I expected. I think the shaking, the vigorous shaking I gave, really diluted this a lot more. And the acidity of the raspberry especially really balances out the excessive sweetness of every other ingredient in this cocktail. The cream mellows everything out and I really like my choice of dark chocolate cereal bar because the dark chocolate on top also helps in taming down the sweetness overall of the cocktail. But the biggest surprise is the great amount of dilution I got. In fact, it became quite a huge cocktail and I think it just juices the gut squeezed out from the strawberries and the raspberries. Mm. Mm. Not bad. I'm wrong again. This is surprisingly good. I really, really suggest the dark chocolate bar. Yes, yeah, something slightly bitter on top. That really changes everything because you sip down and you get a sweet and sour taste, but mainly sweet of the cocktail. And then you get the cream and then as you go down even more or up, you pull your glass up even more, you get some of the nice crunches and some of the dark chocolate. And so you get this whole palette of flavors that just bring you on this nice journey. Ooh. Wow, surprise. The amount of calories in this thing, I don't know. Must be insane. I don't know if I'm gonna have dinner tonight. Uh, maybe this is enough. That'd be like 500 calories. Yeah, it's really sweet. 
the sweetness is covered by the acidity of the raspberries but now that I'm about halfway through I start feeling it the amount of sugar start hitting yeah but overall definitely better than I was expecting so if you enjoyed the video please like subscribe comment down below share with everybody you like and don't like shake yourself another cocktail that substitute for a full dessert and hopefully I will see you next time cheers the closest I ever came to a trifle before today it was the episode of Friends where Rachel makes the trifle for Thanksgiving and uh, in making it she glued two pages up and she makes half a trifle and half something a meat casserole or something like that and the episode actually saw it just a few days ago and it's always quite funny maybe not the best Thanksgiving episode but it really gave us that scene of joy eating the mix of meat and custard and peas and uh, all those and cream and appreciating it that is just it's just such a great shot what's not to like custard good jam good meat good <laughs> i mean in recent year what well, uh, it's a few years it became trendy to shit on friends as a tv series I still think it's one of the funniest and best written uh, series of all time. I'm sorry, I guess that shows I'm old. I like more modern stuff too, but friends just, they just eat the perfect casting. Maybe it's the perfect casting that, uh, so that then they could just make shitty jokes for Chandler and anything he said with a laugh track would be funny anyway, even if it was not even a joke. But the whole structure, the relationship between the characters, it made you care about the characters, even though they were terrible person. And now that we are watching the whole series again for maybe the tenth time, it's uh, every time you watch it, it comes becomes up like, oh, how awful are these people to each other? Why they still love each other? But hey, that, that's the thing. It just uh, well thought out, well written. I think also yeah, the production was great. The actors uh, they were typecasted, as so they were just playing themselves, except for Phoebe, uh, Lisa Kudrov, which was the one that was actually doing more acting. The other one they were just acting like themselves, but they were just funny. And so I like Friends. Yes, some problems. It was shot from the nineties to the early two thousand. There are some problems, we can talk about it, but overall I think it was a really fun series. And every time I see uh, somebody that nowadays is famous, I'm like, oh, you remember that episode of Friends? They were in it, they were doing that line, like, <laughs> Dr. House. Dr. House, he was uh, the guy on the airplane going to London. I'm like, I love that guy, who's the guy? He was Dr. House, he became super big. And uh, John Favreau the crazy billionaire that's so on a spot nowadays because it just sounds exactly like a mix between Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk and uh, so many other cameos that uh, you're like oh ah there was um, I forgot the name of the actor but that's a wonderful part played by the great actor that then was going on to play Jimmy's brother in uh, Better Call Saul. He plays the guy that's trying to sell the fake chocolate. And I could go on all day talking about people that had the cameos on Friends. Everybody passed there. It was, uh, it was the greatest show on earth. and. Uh, and kind of like Metallica, it was the last of its kind. Nobody's gonna achieve again such a success in that genre.